Hi everyone and welcome back. We are live uh, streaming from reInvent and today I have some very special guests. I have Emily, uh, Robert and uh, Bradley. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us what we're doing here? Okay. You're going to kick us off? This is okay. your show. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm Emily Childs. I'm the product manager of AWS Ground Station. We just launched it today. Uh, Andy just announced it about two hours ago. Two hours ago. Wow, yep. fantastic. Hi, I'm Robert Sproles. Uh, I'm the lead ground stations for Spire Global. Spire is a, a, small, a startup that uh, operates a constellation of low Earth orbit satellites. So we're excited to, for this service. Cool. Hi, my name is Brad Cheatham. I'm the CEO of Advanced Space. Uh, we do mission planning and operations for spacecraft in low Earth orbit, uh, in and out into deep space. And so I'm excited to talk today about some of the new products that AWS is launching so that we can uh, operate and plan those uh, space missions. Right, yeah, so AWS is usually all about cloud, but today we go beyond, we go in space. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit more about Ground Station, what it is, and why is it so special? Absolutely. So AWS Ground Station, it's a ground station. What that means, it's antennas that receive satellite data. So you have RF data coming from space, and we've, uh, we have two of them up and running now. We started in April, and we've already got two running, so nice. it's really exciting. Um, by the time we hit general availability, we'll, there will be a total of 12. Cool. Um, so what's needed is a global footprint. So uh, when you have a satellite and it's orbiting around the Earth, what you, when it comes within the ground um, station, when the radius of the ground station, it can transmit data down. And so right. now we have the ability to transmit data directly into AWS Cloud, which and is super exciting. People might be wondering, why do we have ground station? But it's quite fairly easy nowadays to launch a small satellite, right? Nano or Pico satellite. But building ground station is very expensive. Mm -hmm. So ground right. station is basically the same idea of what happened when uh, AWS launched, right? Makes ground station accessible for everyone. As, is that just correct? like the cloud, absolutely. Exactly. So when we started with, with data centers, same thing. Yeah. So right now everybody builds their own ground station. It's very specific to the, uh, the satellite that you have. Um, We've built ground stations that anyone can use, so they're, they're uh, fully managed ground stations that you onboard, and then you can use it from there. Yeah, because so ground yeah. stations are millions of investments, it's, right? It's, yeah, it's a lot of CapEx. It's a lot, yeah. um, So, just like we did when we, we built the cloud, so if you're, you're uh, having a shared environment, then you pay for only what you use, uh -huh. just like we did with the cloud, so we're doing that with space now. So, who would use Astra? I mean, Robert. Tell us. Yeah, so as a, oh. as a startup, as a small satellite operator, it's very appealing to us because it gives us flexibility. Like Emily just said, it allows us to not have to invest as much CapEx. We can take advantage of you building the infrastructure, and it gives us that flexibility to scale quickly. So startups, um, new entrants into the space market would be a very appealing um, market for us. Um, what do you uh, do with uh, sure. Ground Station? Oh. Sure, yeah, I, I think it's, it's really important and exciting is that this innovation really is a natural extension of a lot of what's going on in the space industry right now. We've seen tremendous innovation and change in, in how we launch things into space. We've seen a lot of innovation and change in how we build satellites, like Spire has led the, led the charge on a lot of that. And a lot of what we're working on in advanced space is how do we plan missions and operate missions more efficiently. And our side of that is software, but the other key piece of this, which is a bottleneck, whether you're national security, uh, civil space like NASA or commercial space is how do you talk to that satellite? What's the infrastructure? And so by deploying those resources, I think it's going to innovate for everybody in the value chain of space, not just startups. I think we'll see uh, NASA and others have a lot of value from this as well. Yeah, so if I would uh, want to launch a satellite tomorrow, I, I love little satellite guys, <laughs> how would I get to start with ground station and then go into space? Okay, so uh, it's easy to onboard. Okay. Uh, you'd onboard your satellite. Uh, once you've onboarded, you'd go to the uh, console, you'd select your satellite, and it tells you on the console which ground stations your satellite will be passing over, and you select which ones that you want to downlink, okay. and downlink your data, and you can also command and control also from the ground station, so you can command and control your satellite to do, you know, it depends on uh, what the company does. Maybe you want to move your solar arrays more towards the sun because you need more power. So you can command and control using AWS. So you're saying that I can control the satellite right from the AWS console, right? Right from the console. That's pretty insane, yes. right? What kind of innovation do we uh, foresee, I mean, from our customers? What kind of uh, ideas do you think are going to be uh, emerging from this kind of, I mean, groundbreaking uh, uh, innovations? Well, the great thing that we have about this is once you're 
close to all the other AWS services, bringing in that satellite data and then combining it with things like machine learning. Um, RoboMaker, we announced right. yesterday. So if yeah. you can imagine uh, a, a instance where you have somebody that's created a robotics and say there's a natural disaster, there's a, per, or there's a um, earthquake. And so instead of sending people in to look for, to rescue people, you can send in a robotics, you can take a picture of the Earth from the satellite to see where that there might be an issue, yeah. and then send in robotics using that satellite data instead of sending people in. Yeah, so you touched a very good point, right? Uh, Ground Station integrates directly with all the cloud services, right? So machine learning obviously is going to be big, there's tons of data coming down. How do we use that data? What kind of service should uh, should we plug in, and how does it work? You want to talk about how you guys use it? Uh, well, can you yeah. tell us how yeah, you use it, actually? They, yeah, I'd be happy to. So Spire, we call ourselves a satellite-powered data company, and you notice that data is the key there, okay? Yeah. Data is what we're about. All of these other things, building satellites, building ground stations and operating them, are just ancillary um, re, uh, things that we have to do out of necessity. Uh, we don't want to necessarily build the satellites or ground stations, but we have to to be able to get the data. And again, data is the key. Our data already goes into Amazon Web Services, so it's a natural extension for that data to flow naturally to the, to the cloud. Uh, this is going to give us flexibility. The ability to, to scale up and down as we need it, to have that capability there just in time. You know, we don't have to put the CapEx in before, uh, before launch. It's when the satellites are in orbit, then the service is there and ready for us. That flexibility is really key for us. Yeah, and I mean, flexibility in the cloud is basically what kind of foster innovation, right? How, how hard was it before? Well, it, it really, we had no other option. If you look at you know, five years ago when Spire was starting to build our network, there weren't options for just kind of on, um, and there was no console we could just log into and say, I want some, yeah. some connectivity to orbit. So we had to do this, again, because there just wasn't an option. It's not that it's necessarily difficult. It's a very old and mature industry. There are a lot of players that have been doing this for a long time. So it's well understood, but it is very capital intensive. And the way we built our network was it's very tailored for our needs. What Amazon has done is they've built a very broad uh, offering that applies to many different types of industries. Right. So we all get to benefit from this infrastructure being in place. Yeah, we talked a lot about democratization of technology, but now we're touching dec democratizations of space, right? Right. And that's going to be pretty interesting. How do you use Ground Station nowadays? Right, and I right. think to build on that, I think the, one of the most exciting things for, for Ground Station is going to be scale. And that's something that in space we really haven't seen as much in the past as maybe we have in other sectors. And what I mean by that is we have dozens of companies building rockets to launch satellites, companies talking about building hundreds or thousands of satellites to, per, to connect to the world with internet, to collect information and data, um, and then to explore deep space. And I think when we start to see that scale, that's something I think is going to be very unique uh, for what Amazon can bring to this, uh, because that's kind of what you guys cut your teeth on, is scale in computing. And I think when we start seeing scale in ground connectivity, it's really going to open up a lot of that uh, data and that information that is coming down from space to help not only democratize access, but to space itself, but to the data that's coming out of it. And when we see that with our partners who are building satellite constellations and are, are working for national security reasons or for scientific exploration, uh, there's a lot of uh, impact that that's going to have in terms of accessibility and scale to, to operations. So let's talk about uh, challenges a little bit. You know, I think a lot of people on live kind of dream about space, right? What are the big challenges that you have when you work with space, like satellite, ground station, but what are the other engineering challenges that you see? I'll start. So I think one of the biggest challenges uh, is space is incredibly complex, and there is not a lot of margin for error when we're talking about putting things on a rocket, launching them into space, and then operating them for years and years on end. Right, and so I think as we approach this from a ground segment perspective or any perspective, that those challenges are, are gonna, gonna be something we have to address. Um, and I think there's an example, if I can use it, um, of what we have been working with NASA on uh, out into deep space, which is analogous to the, to the concerns we have uh, here uh, with the ground segment, is uh, we're building a peer-to-peer -peer navigation system with NASA to help them operate and commercial missions operate at the moon, which is very analogous in terms of the scale and the need for scale that we'll see for a ground segment here for uh, missions that are closer to the Earth. Right. 
How about about your side? What are the challenges you've seen and one of the difficult things about space is that once you launch a satellite, you're stuck with that hardware. You know, that with, with very rare and expensive exceptions, there's no way to go up and service that, that satellite or that hardware. Uh, so Spire, we use a lot of um, software-defined radios, and that allows us to upgrade through software the capabilities of that satellite. Um, what, one of the things that Amazon's uh, Ground, ground station <laughs> service will allow us to do is to not be locked in ourselves with this ground network. As we move to different technologies, different frequency bands, it is assumed that Amazon will move in that direction as well. So we won't have to own that hardware anymore. It'll again give us that flexibility to move to whatever the latest hardware is on the ground yeah. to support the mission in space. It's very similar to cloud computing. Right. Right? We take the heavy lifting yep. out of you so Absolutely. you can focus right. on your business uh, innovations, right? So, Do you want to talk a little bit more about the challenges from AWS side building ground station? I think uh, most of people are trying to so have <laughs> those questions like, what does it mean? So, um, you know, I, we actually built it from, from April till now, so we, we stood them up very quickly. It's so so uh, fast, yeah. yeah, and it was it's great. Crazy. So we had yeah. some customers testing with us and, um, so one of the things that we saw as a challenge really from the customer side is getting the data down to earth. Right. So you've got thousands, like 2,000 satellites in low earth orbit right now. So that's a lot of satellites. It's going to yeah. grow to about 16,000 satellites and there's, you need to put the data somewhere. So we found customers are saying they, um, if you don't have a place to downlink your data, you have to either dump your data or you have to wait and then waiting for the data sometimes it's no longer pertinent. Yeah, exactly. So we have the, the entire network to be able to downlink and process very quickly. Cool. You have a demo though, right? You have uh, something to show us. I don't us. have a demo, uh, so but I have, I have a picture of uh, one of our antennas. Oh, you want to show the, uh, the antenna? Yep. Can we uh, show that? So, so can this you is explain a little bit what's on the, the photo? Yeah, th this is one of our antennas out of Oregon. So um, we just wanted to show that what they look like and uh, 5.4 meter dishes, so they're yes. very powerful antennas. So we have two antennas located at each ground station. And do we plan to add more antennas eventually? Absolutely, we're going to scale as needed. So um, as the industry uh, uh, adopts us, we're going to bring more and more antennas uh, per each ground station and possibly add new ones in the future. Oh, cool. um, as, a, as, a, as, uh, as an engineer, right, uh, space is very interesting. Uh, what are the things that, if I want to get started to work with space, what are the things you uh, can say to the audience live? Like, that's the path. You know, for me, understanding software engineering, I know the path, but if I want to be a space engineer, how could I get there? One of the things that we've seen recently is that this really, space really is accessible now. Whether it's software tools, you yep. know, before um, if you had to set up a, hard, uh, a server, the server hardware, you had to set up all your infrastructure just to have the tools to start coding. Now you don't have to do any of that. You know, all that's on demand with AWS. Same thing is starting to happen with space. Um, you can now literally go online and spec out a satellite, um, the parts that you need to assemble that. It does still take some know-how, especially on the testing side, but it's becoming more and more accessible now. We, we've seen recently high school classes have launched satellites, and that's just so cool to think about high school students engaged in this process, doing actual science, you know, doing yeah. real things, not just you know, something as a token satellite, but doing things that make a difference. And this is just one more step in that direction. Uh, I, I don't want to use the word democratizing space. I'm not sure if we should say that or not. <laughs> but it really does make it accessible. Um, yeah. The console that I don't know if Emily's going to show it in a minute. Uh, we couldn't get the console. I mean, it, I yes. couldn't log in. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> yeah. But, but the ability to, yeah. Yeah, to, to have a console that you can log into, I hate to say, you know, from your garage, but if you think yeah, about right. the, the startup mentality exactly. of being in your garage and making this happen, that can now happen. Uh, that console um, now gives you access to the ground segment as well. So There's just one less piece that you have to worry about putting together on your own or having the expertise in yourself. Um, well, you'll be down to that oh. too. I think one, one thing to add is I think there's many pathways to space now. And so in the past, it might have been a very limited number of careers, a, a limited number of things you could do to be involved in space. I think that's opened up tremendously in terms of software, in terms of systems engineering, uh, a lot of the engineering and math uh, systems. But also, as we see the commercialization of space really take off, it, we need people with, with expertise in business, in finance, in legal, and a lot of other things that you might not traditionally think of as a space career. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of need for, for people. And I think that's going to continue to multiply 
multiply uh, as not only commercial companies start to do incredible things, um, but some people might not know, NASA has, has recommitted themselves to going back to the moon with humans, this time to stay, and creating a whole infrastructure in the Earth-Moon system that I think is going to drive a lot of demand. And, and for, for the talent that I think some of the folks watching this, and, and especially people clued in to what cloud computing can do and what it's capable of, that's a massive advantage. So the folks who are, who are clued into AWS, I think you have a natural edge in space. Yeah, so uh, it, there's a good question from Ken Lee, AWS. Uh, if I want to use Ground Station today, do I need to own a satellite, or can you share time with other people on the satellite? What are the, the options for me to start using uh, Ground Station? So you have to have uh, authority to be able to command the satellite. So you're either an owner or an operator of a satellite. Okay. So once you're onboarded to the service, you can go ahead and, and fly your satellite and downlink anytime you want. So, so I first need to build my satellite. You first, you <laughs> first need to have access to a satellite. So okay. generally you would own it, but you may be an operator. And what, I mean, the, the idea of time sharing on a satellite, is that something that happens? I'm totally ignorant of space, but for me, I'm, Seems like a cool idea, right? It's like I think we'll start seeing those sorts of things come to fruition with tools like this that really do open it up. It will make sense for, um, for operators to create those opportunities for a wider audience. So I would like to uh, take maybe a leap forward, two years, three years, five years. What do you foresee customers do with this kind of technology uh, at the, the hand of the console, right? Well, also I think one of the things we'll see is, is an abstraction. I think instead of necessarily buying a satellite and launching it, I think you'll probably, as a user, have a, a desire for some sort of data, some sort of information, and you'll go buy that data or that information. And the satellite piece of it, just like uh, some of the cloud computing infrastructure, you won't even see it. It won't be a, a thing that you worry about. And I think that in, in the very near future, we're going to see a scale in space like we haven't seen before that's going to be really exciting. And I think the potential there is really going to be for the community to figure out how to use it. Right. I don't think anyone here is going to know what that answer is. Yeah, it's very difficult to forecast right, the use of technology. But I can easily imagine that uh, I need some big, large amount of data to do, for example, some machine learning training right. from data from space, and I can maybe ask that data from, uh, from companies, space companies, right? Well, one of the things that this enables is the ability to share satellite data. Right. So if you have several different um, companies or organizations that are bringing satellite down and layering it together, um, putting it in a data lake, uh, being able to, to do some, some um, analytics against it, you can find some really interesting anomalies, and you can find a lot of things to do with the, you know, you have weather sensing, you have uh, Earth observation, you have a lot of different data that comes from space, but being able to put it in a single platform and run the analytics on it, you have a lot of open possibilities. Yeah, it's like, I think the space is the, is the, <laughs> the limit. Is the limit, huh? is that <laughs> what, what we're saying? Uh, do you have any other uh, last words that you want to talk about? Uh, things that maybe really excites you in the, in the space and that you want to share with the audience? I'm just excited to see what this is going to look like, not just in two months, but in 12 months, 18, 24. I think this service will continue to evolve. I think it's also going to start to shape the industry, and I think it's going to be exciting to be a part of and to see what happens with this. Yeah, I'll just add, I think this is a really exciting convergence of two really interesting fields between what Amazon has historically done with web services and what the space industry has been doing for, for the last couple decades. And I think as those come together through programs like uh, AWS Ground Station, there's going to be a lot of really interesting outputs that are, are really hard to predict, but I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to revolutionize a lot of what we do in space. Yeah, I can imagine. Last words of inspiration for all the engineers that want to come and work for space? Uh, absolutely. Um, there are certain companies that might have started with two people in a garage. Yeah. Some. Oh. <laughs> so we think about it. Like, Give me see, Amazon. <laughs> there's Type. one of those. I've heard of it. Um, so same thing here. So starting to make it accessible. So satellite, the, the yeah. technology of making satellites has gotten to the point where anybody can do that. Uh, yeah. Ride sharing with uh, launching has made it a lot less expensive. And so now with AWS Ground Station, we have that third segment, that Ground Station segment, so that getting the data back to Earth is now accessible to anyone. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Emily, Robert, and Brad, uh, for spending the time with us and uh, explaining us uh, what uh, space is all about. And uh, see you uh, soon for the next uh, segment. Bye-bye. Thank you.